Hi, everybody. We are reading this book. It's called The Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing by Judy Bloom. Maybe you've heard about it. She's a pretty famous author. And uh, what I like about Judy Bloom is that she really tells about the way kids feel. And she tells stories that are pretty realistic. So chapter one is called The Big Winner. I won Dribble at Jimmy Fargo's birthday party. All the other guys got to take home a goldfish in a little plastic bag. I won him because I guessed that there were 348 jelly beans in Mrs. Fargo's jar. Really? There were 423, she told us later. Doesn't that sound like that um, activity that we do on Steam Night? Still, my guess was the closest. Peter Warren Hatcher is the big winner, Mrs. Fargo announced. At first, I felt bad that I didn't get a goldfish too. Then Jimmy handed me the glass bowl. Inside, there were some water and three rocks. A tiny green turtle was sleeping on the biggest rock. All the other guys looked at their goldfish. I knew what they were thinking. They wished they could have tiny green turtles too. I named my turtle Dribble while I was walking home from Jimmy's party. I live at 25 West 68th Street. It's an old apartment building, but it's got one of the best elevators in New York City. There are mirrors all around. You can see yourself from every angle. There's, soft, there's a soft cushioned bench to sit on if you're too tired to stand. The elevator um, operator's name is Henry Bevelheimer. He lets us call him Henry because Bevelheimer is very hard to say. Our apartment's on the 12th floor, but I don't have to tell Henry. He already knows. He knows everybody in the building. He's that smart. Even he knows that I'm nine and I'm in fourth grade. I showed him dribble right away. I won him at a birthday party, I said. Henry smiled. Your mother's going to be surprised. Henry was right. My mother was really surprised. Her mouth opened wide and when I said, just look what I won at Jimmy Fargo's birthday party. I held up the tiny green turtle. I've already named him Dribble. Isn't that a great name for a turtle? My mother made a face. I don't like the way he smells. What do you mean, I asked. I put my nose right down close to him. It, I didn't smell anything but turtle. So Dribble smells like turtle, I thought. Well, he's supposed to. That's what he is. I wonder what turtles smell like. And I'm not going to take care of and I'm not going to take care of him either, my mother added. Of course you're not, I told her. He's my turtle, and I'm the only one who's going to take care of him. You're going to change his water and clean his bowl and feed him all of that, she asked. Yes, I said, and even more, I'm going to see to it that he is happy. This time, my mother made a funny noise, like a groan. I went into my bedroom and I put dribble on the top of my dresser. I tried to pet him and tell him that he would be happy living with me, but it isn't easy to pet a turtle. They aren't soft and furry and they don't lick you or anything. Still, I had my very own pet at last. Later, when I sat down at the dinner table, my mother said, I smell turtle. Peter, go and scrub your hands. Some people might think that my mother is my biggest problem. She doesn't like turtles and she's always telling me to scrub my hands. Does that sound familiar in your home? That, do, that doesn't mean just run them under the water. Scrub means I'm supposed to use soap and rub my hands together. Then I've got to rinse and dry them. I ought to know by now. I've heard it enough. But my mother isn't my biggest problem. Neither is my father. He spends a lot of time watching commercials on TV. That's because he's in the advertising business. These days, his favorite commercial is the one about Juicy O. He wrote it himself, and the president of the Juicy O company liked it so much, he sent my father a whole crate of Juicy O for our family to drink. It tastes like a combination of oranges, pineapples, grapefruits, pears, and bananas. And if you want to know the truth, I'm getting pretty sick of drinking it. But Juicy O isn't my biggest problem either. My biggest problem is my brother, Farley Drexel Hatcher. He's two and a half years old. Everybody calls him Fudge. I feel sorry for him if he's gonna grow up with a name like Fudge, but I don't say a word. It's none of my business. 
Fudge is always in my way. Does that sound familiar to anyone? He messes up everything he sees. And when he gets mad, he throws himself flat on the floor and screams. And he kicks. And he bangs. The only time I really like him is when he's sleeping. He sucks four fingers on his hand and makes a slurping sound. When Fudge saw Dribble, he said, ooh, see. And I said, that's my turtle. Get it? Mine. You don't touch him. Fudge says, no touch. Then he laughed like crazy. How do you think that's going to work out? Hmm. Chapter two is called Mr. and Mrs. Juicio. One night, my father came home from the office all excited. He told us Mr. and Mrs. Yarby were coming to New York. He's the president of Juicio Company. He lives in Chicago. I wondered if he'd bring my father another crate of Juicio. If he did, I'd probably be drinking it for the rest of my life. Just thinking about it was enough to make my stomach hurt. My father said that he invited Mr. and Mrs. Yarby to stay with us. My mother wanted to know why they couldn't stay at a hotel, like most people who come to New York. My father said they could, but he didn't want them to. He thought they'd be more comfortable staying with us. My mother said this was about the silliest thing she'd ever heard. But she fixed up Fudge's bedroom for our guests. She put fancy sheets and brand new blanket on the hide -a bed That's a sofa that opens up into a bed at night. It's in Fudge's room because that used to be our den. Before he was born, we watched TV in there, and lots of times Grandma slept over on the hide bed Now we watch TV right here in the living room, and Grandma doesn't sleep over as often. My mother moved Fudge's crib into my room. He's going to get a regular bed when he's three, my mother says. There are lots of reasons I don't like to sleep in the same room with Fudge. I found out that two months ago when my bedroom was being painted, I had to sleep in Fudgy's room for three nights because the paint smell made me cough. For one thing, he talks in his sleep. And if a person didn't know better, a person could get scared. Another thing is the slurping noises he makes. It's true that I like to hear it when I'm awake, but when I'm trying to fall asleep, I like things very quiet. When I complained about having to sleep with Fudge, my mother said, it's just for two nights, Peter. I'll sleep in the living room, I suggested, on the sofa or even in a chair. No, my mother said, you'll sleep in your bedroom, in your own bed. There was no point arguing. Mom wasn't going to change her mind. She spent the day in the kitchen. She really cooked up a storm. She used so many pots and pans. Fudge didn't have any left to bang together. And that's one of his favorite pastimes, banging pots and pans together. A person can get an awful headache listening to that racket. Right after lunch, my mother opened up the dinner table. We don't have a separate dining room. When we have a com company for dinner, we eat at one end of the living room. When mom finished setting the table, she put the silver bowl filled with flowers right in the middle. And I said, hey mom, looks like you're expecting the president or something. Very funny, Peter, my mother answered. Sometimes my mother laughs like crazy at my jokes. Other times she pretends not to get them. And then there are times I know she gets them, but doesn't seem to like them. This is one of those times. So I decided no more jokes until after dinner. I went to Jimmy Fargo's for the afternoon. I came home at four o'clock. I found my mother standing over the dinner table mumbling. Fudge was on the floor playing with my father's socks. I'm not sure why he likes to play with socks so much, but if you give him a few pairs, he'll pay, play quietly for hours. I said, hi mom, I'm home. I'm missing two flowers, my mother said. I don't know how she noticed that two flowers were missing from her silver bowl because there were at least a dozen of them left. But sure enough, when I checked, I saw two stems with nothing on them. Don't look at me, mom, I said. What would I do with two measly flowers? So we both looked at Fudge. Did you take mommy's pretty flowers? My mom asked him. No take, Fudge said. He was chewing on something. What's in your mouth? My mother asked. Fudge didn't answer. Show mommy. No show, Fudge said. Oh yes, my mother picked him up and forced his mouth open and she fished out a rose petal. What did you do with mommy's flowers? She raised her voice. She was getting really upset. Fudge laughed. Tell mommy. Yum, Fudge said. Yum, yum, yum. Oh no, my mother cried, rushing to the telephone. 
She called Dr. Cone. She told him that Fudge ate two flowers. Dr. Cone must have asked what kind because my mother said, roses, I think, but I can't be sure. One might have been a daisy. There was a long pause while my mother listened to whatever Dr. Cohn had to say. And then mom said, thank you, Dr. Cohn," And she hung up. No more flowers, she told Fudge. You understand? No more, Fudge repeated. No more, no more. My mother gave him a spoonful of peppermint flavored medicine, the kind I take when I have stomach pains. Then she carried Fudge off to have his bath. Leave it to my brother to eat flowers. I wondered how they tasted. Maybe they're delicious and I don't even know because I've never tasted one, I thought. I decided to find out. I picked off the petal from one of Pink Rose and I put it in my mouth and tried to chew it up, but I couldn't do it. It tasted awful. I spit it out into the garbage. Well, at least now I knew that I wasn't missing anything great. Fudge ate his supper on the kitchen before our company arrived. When he was eating, I heard my mother remind him, Fudgy's going to be a good boy. Very good for daddy's friends. Good, Fudge said, good boy. That's right, my mother told him. I changed and scrubbed up while Fudge finished his supper. I was going to eat with company. Being nine had its advantages. My mother was all dressed up by the time my father got home with the Yarbies. You'd never have guessed that my mom spent most of the day in the kitchen. You'd also never have guessed that Fudge ate two flowers. He was feeling fine. He even smelled nice, like baby powder. Mrs. Yarby picked him up right away. I knew she would. She looked like a grandmother, that type that always makes a big deal out of fudge. She walked into the living room cuddling him, and then she sat down on the sofa and bounced fudge up and down on her lap. Isn't he the cutest boy, Mrs. Yarby said. I just love babies. She gave him a big kiss on the top of his head. I kept waiting for someone to tell her that fudge was not a baby, but no one did. The, my father carried the Yarby suitcase into Fudge's room. When he came back, he introduced me to our company. This is our older son, Peter, he said to the Yarbys. I'm nine and I'm in the fourth grade, I told him. How do you do, Peter? Mr. Yarby said. I'm gonna pause there, friends. This was a shorter read aloud than we will have in the future, but when we come back, we're gonna find out what happens um, when Peter's dad's boss is over for dinner. <laughs>